Are we in a housing bubble? Is the market going to crash like 2008? And if so, what can you do about it? My name is Flippin' Landlord Ninja, and I'm with Two Guys Take on Real Estate. And today I'm gonna talk about what I see, what our current situation is in my market, what might happen and what we can learn from 2008, and what am I doing today to prepare for the future. As always, we'd love it for you guys to hit the subscribe button, and don't forget to hit that notification bell icon because we're coming out with new videos every week. Two guys take on real estate. First off, are we in a housing bubble? And honestly, yes, I, I think so. I don't think the current situation that we're in is sustainable. I think we're, there's a lot of factors that come in play, why it's going up, besides the fact that we have crazy amount of lumber and just general building materials skyrocketing right now, over 300% from just a year ago, we're also seeing massively low supply. Right now we're having more houses that are more realtors on the market than there are houses to sell. And I mean, that's something that happens often, but there's just so much pent up demand for people wanting to move into lower tax states, moving into lower areas where they can move. Like I'm seeing a lot of people moving from Boston and the Worcester area out to my area because they can work remotely and therefore they're massively reducing their expenses by and their living expenses, but then they're able to still make the same income because they're allowed to work remotely. And even the fact that we're seeing banks actually calling up these jobs and verifying that these people will be able to still work remotely after the pandemic to verify that this is going to continue on. So we're seeing these people that are, you know, normally being able to pay six, seven hundred thousand dollars for a house coming out in here and buying a three hundred thousand dollar house. And this is driving the prices up because, yeah, they don't mind putting twenty, thirty thousand dollars over asking because, well, yeah, it's a deal for them. And so that's really allowing this kind of K-shaped recovery because those that can work from home remotely are able to shift and actually get a bigger house. Whereas those that can't, you know, kind of a lower middle, you know, kind of lower class that actually still has to kind of still work at the job site, cannot work remotely, can't shift into a lower house or a lower income tax state area. So they're having to kind of basically keep the situation same, which is allows those that have kind of go up and those that don't kind of continue on a downward trend where their costs are still going up. I also think that one thing that we're not even talking about, I don't hear anyone talking about, is in the next couple of years, we're gonna see taxes increase because all this value that's being driven up, generally it doesn't uh, get into the assessor's database. They don't reassess people's taxes for a few years. It's usually every couple of years. And so all of a sudden now with all this great value that's been driven up, we're going to see a massive increase in, well, tax revenue for the cities, which is great, but all of a sudden, even the lower end is going to see their taxes maybe increase 40, 50%, which is going to be a, a new burden for these people where they didn't see the income increase, but they have also now had a new tax increase just because of the fact that the housing stock in that area has driven up based on outside factors. All this stuff with low supply, high demand is creating this upward trend. I don't think it's sustainable. I don't think that this is something that's going to continue on indefinitely, but I don't think we're in a housing bubble that's going to pop and burst like 2008. 2008 had a very different situation going on for it. There were people in 2008 that had very low credit that were getting homes that they really shouldn't afford. Right now we're seeing people with much better credit getting homes that are generally actually reducing their costs like I just talked about as opposed to 2008 where people are actually temporarily reducing their costs because they're getting like no doc loans they were getting interest only loans that were going to be readjusting in a few years and therefore once it did all of a sudden they had a massive expense whereas these are we're now right now we're seeing more 30-year fixed mortgages low low interest rates so we're really seeing people shifting to lower their expenses whereas people were using their homes to actually as a piggy bank to go on vacation buy that boat buy that brand new car and all these things. So there's just this ma major shift and difference of what's going on in the housing market. Now, it's still not sustainable. These housing prices can't keep going up forever. And we also still have this massive amount of demand. So we still, and that we're not seeing the construction actually meeting that demand, especially right now with the housing prices for lumber going through the roof, they're actually scaling back because they're trying to figure out how they can actually fit these costs whether it be the lumber prices or even the labor prices. Labor prices have gone through the roof. We're trying to hire contractors now and it's really, really difficult to find contractors, A, that are willing to work 
or willing to work at even close to the prices we were paying a year ago. It's you know more than doubled in a lot of situations where they hey they, there's such demand uh, out in the Berkshires right now. I trying to find a couple contractors for some flips out that way, and most people I'm being told are six to 12 months out before they could even start a project. And that's mostly because a lot of New Yorkers and stuff like that have been shifting in buying lower homes that they can massively reduce their cost living in the Berkshires, working remotely as well. And now they're fixing up the houses, they're adding all this stuff, and they're basically taking on a lot of the local contractors who which they're paying more than I would normally pay. Because as a flipper, I need to keep my cost down and I'm looking at buying volume. But as a you know contractor, I get it. Of course, I'm gonna take the client that I, they'll pay top dollar. Well, why wouldn't I take those clients? That's also happening and shifting. So like I said, in 2008, we had a big bubble burst and we saw prices come down. Now, once again, it's an inefficient market. So it did come down, but it took some time uh, over a few years to actually fully you know, bottom out. I think what we're gonna see here is more of a letting out of the air. It's gonna kind of deflate and kind of, kind of gradually go down, but not drastically go down like we saw before. I see there are still the forbearances, like the foreclosure forbearance and the eviction forbearance, all that's ending very soon. That might start increasing some inventory, but what's also we're seeing is that many banks are actually working with these people that are in forbearance, whether they lower their interest rate, they take what they owe and they put it on either as a second mortgage or they tack it on to the end of the mortgage. A lot of that's gonna be happening. So they don't want, they're gonna be A, probably forced by the government, but also that the banks aren't gonna to wanna to see this massive foreclosure happen because that's all of a sudden drops the value of the assets they have as well. So they're trying to work with people and the fact that people, once again, do have a better credit situation than they did back in 2008, there's a much more potential for them to actually be able to sustain a, a longer term mortgage. And this is, allows the banks to have a less of a risk. So what am I doing right now? Because once again, it's hard to find inventory as a flipper or as a buy and hold. So what I'm looking right now is it's all about finding a deal. So we are out there hunting for deals like there is no tomorrow. We're out there driving for dollars. We're constantly out there working on creating new lists, not the lists that you generally can buy online, but we're looking at trying to create lists, whether we go to the court database, we're looking at maybe condemned property, we're looking at eviction type properties where landlords are getting screwed because that the tenants aren't you know paying just because they don't have to. And therefore, you know, they're kind of stuck in a situation where these newer landlords don't know what they can do and they can't actually be, it's not sustainable for them because they're a smaller landlord. They only can weather the storm for a few months. And now with some of these balances reaching $10,000, $20,000 on a tenancy, they're not able to pay their mortgage and they don't have a federally backed mortgage. So they're actually required to pay it. And so they're really going to be in that world of hurt right now and they just want to get out and there might be a way for us to help them as well as them to get kind of move on and get you know their situation in a better way so we're looking at all these different avenues because right now it's all about making sure you find a really good deal i don't want to overpay for things i'm not looking to for the most part get into this crazy single family market and if i were you if i was looking for a home right now i'd actually probably rent i'd actually look to either house hack or rent temporarily because right now it doesn't make sense to overpay. Yes, interest rates are low and that's all, but you're still paying over 20, 30, $50,000 for a home when you can maybe wait just a year and then things will kind of cool down. Things will be kind of more, find an equilibrium and you can get a more reasonable house. I don't think interest rates are going down or up that is anytime soon. The feds have pretty much said so. So I think that's gonna also lend to a good situation where you'll be able to get stuff still with a low rate, much better deal in the future. Or if you go out and hunt a deal like we're doing, you might be able to find a fantastic deal that maybe you just had to put in that sweat equity and find that. We're also setting up a lot of lines of credit right now. I think that there's still gonna be opportunities in the future. Maybe I'm wrong and things do actually tank. And what is gonna be really needed then is cash. Cash will be king. So cash is where you're gonna be able to get great deals. Maybe there'll be tons of short sales uh, and that you'll be able to actually be the ones that gobble up that. Uh, or maybe you'll be able to find wholesale deals and that you can gobble up with cash. So that's gonna be really important. So you know, having some cash on sidelines, making sure you have lines of credit available, whether it be business lines or HELOCs or home equity lines of credit, those are what's gonna put you in a good position to be able to take advantage of what's going to happen in the future. 
also understanding that it's very market specific. So if we're seeing a lot of things shifting from Boston, shifting from New York into these areas, what other areas maybe will be the next opportunity? So I think that's also something is look at the markets, look where things are shifting to and try to anticipate some of that, what's gonna happen where you can actually get ahead of it and therefore you can take advantage of it. Once again, it's an inefficient market with real estate. So it's beautiful that you can actually generally foresee things going a few months in advance, as opposed to like the stock market, which is, or the crypto market, which basically turns on a dime and then 30, 40 minutes later, you, you lost 40, 30% value and you're kind of holding the bag. So as always guys, I hope this is helpful. And uh, don't forget to check out this video here that the uh, YouTube album is going to suggest for you. Hit that subscribe button and don't forget to hit that notification icon. Thanks again. Have a good one.